Greetings, Grace family all over the world, both locally here in Grand Rapids, as well as those who watch us from various places around the globe. Thank you so much for being a part of what's happening at Grace for the Nations Church. As we embark upon the last quarter of this year, I wanted you to be the first to know that we're going to be moving our service times. We're gonna be actually still airing at 10 o'clock, but our physical gatherings starting November 1st or the first Sunday in November will be every Sunday at one o'clock. Every Sunday at one o'clock here at Grace for the Nations Church. So if you're in the area, make your way to worship with us. We've gone through a lot and COVID has taught us all a lot in the body of Christ. One thing that remains true is that we are to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It's important that we connect and that we're able to um, check in with one another for fellowship, for nurturing, for physical prayer, the laying on of hands, all of those things that brought us to this place of faith that we're in right now. So we wanna invite you to come and be a part of worship here at Grace for the Nations Church at one o'clock beginning the first Sunday in November through the end of the year. And as we always say, here at Grace, we believe there's hope. God bless. Hello, my name is Marilyn Cooper and our prayer focus for today is intentional. And in Romans 12 and two, we are commanded, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good and perfect will. Living intentionally means to purposefully pursue the life God has called you to live. Intentionality requires deliberate action. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to transform our thinking to be the union with you. Help us to align our actions so that we are intentional about living according to your will. Help us to think with a purpose and to make plans to live intentionally according to your word. We know that knowing you and knowing your word is crucial to living an intentional life. Lord, we ask that you help us to be more intentional about our prayer life, more intentional about sowing. Help us to be more intentional about serving and loving others. Lord, we thank you. We praise you and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Greetings. I am so excited to share with you today that this is just an opportunity for us to just be everything that God has called us to be. So what I'm going to share with you today has to do with the word authenticity as far as being you. Um, many times we get caught up in you know our roles and our assignments and our abilities and our talents when really that's not who we are. That's what we do. And so I'm excited to share as I'm going on my own journey of continuing to discover and rediscover what God has created me to be. And that's simply just being authentic, being authentic, being you. And the thing that I want to share with you is it's a process. It's a process. No one ever arrives at that destination. It's something that you're constantly involving, just like seasons in our lives where there's some things that we'll be dealing with early in our, our lives that as we grow and as we mature, either those things we have either overcome or those things we are teaching to someone else as we have went through um, that process because God has equipped us. He has equipped us for the journey and so I hope through this devotion that you will continue to seek God and think about what is the process on being authentic and being authentically you. Of course, if anyone that knows me, you know I'm going to go to the Word of God. Second Peter the first chapter, the third verse, this is the NIV translation. It says, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. And so if it tells you that from the beginning, God has equipped us with everything that we need to navigate through this life, as long as it, it pertains to life and godliness, those are the, that's the framework that he gave us. So inside that framework, we are free to be as creative, as creative as we want to be. But yet we have to make sure that it pertains to life and godliness, because that's what it is that God has for us. And for me, I don't want anything from this world 
that God didn't intend for me to have. And so I want you to be intentional on our journey as we go into authenticity. Um, the King James Version says pertains to life and godliness. And so that just means that I have a responsibility and you have responsibility that as we embarking on this seeking God, that we're also, one thing we have to do in seeking God is to do a self inventory, do what you call, I call it a self inspection. Um, oftentimes um, on my secular job, as far as where I work, we go through all these processes, we get all of our work done. And then when we get audited later on, oftentimes they look and say, you missed this, you missed that, you're supposed to take care of this. Now it's not the end of the world, but there's some things that probably could have alleviated some of the challenges that we had at the end. And that's if we had done a self inspection. And so oftentimes Oftentimes when we're trying to find out who we are in God and we're seeking Him, it takes an opportunity to actually do first a self-inspection to determine where is it that I am in God so that I can see where it is that He wants me to go and what He wants me um, to do. Now, he wants our life to be produced fully, fully, and that's what I'm excited about, because this life is supposed to be a life filled with purpose, a life filled with um, the assignment that he has on us, even in the midst of all of this chaos and the trials and the pandemic, it doesn't stop the purpose and the assignment that God has on our life, that we have the uh, responsibility um, to be authentic. And um, today, who I am may not be um, who I was years ago, and it's certainly not going to be who I'm going to be as I continue um, on this journey. It's a journey of discovery because God knows who he has intended me to be. I just have the responsibility of allowing him to reveal it to me because according to the scriptures, before he even formed me in my mother's womb, he knew me. And so that's the same for you. Before you were formed, he knew what it was. He knew who you were going to be, uh, what family you were going to come into. He knew whether you were going to be born into a, a family with uh, two parents. He knew you, whether or not you were going to be born into a single household. He knew whether you were going to be adopted. I mean, God knew all of these things and so nothing surprises him but sometimes as we're going through the journey and trying to find ourselves, we get a little off kilter because we focus on the circumstances and the things that are going on in our life when our focus if we just turn it around and focus on who God has intended us to be regardless of what's going on in our life and regardless of what's going on in the world that's how we'll continue to find our our, our authentic self. You know, my thoughts that I have about myself, are they the thoughts that God wants to have, wants me to have about myself? Are they the thoughts that I may have come up with based on maybe some of my shortcomings or some of my failures? And then yet I made that the, the real that plays in my head. That's not who God wants us to be. He wants us to be authentic and he wants us to be, um, he wants us to be who we are. Sometimes I have to wonder um, when I look at myself and the things that I do, do my thoughts and my actions line up with the character of God? And I have to be intentional about that. I have to read my word. I have to know who God is intimately in order for me to be authentic and be who he has called me to be. So I can't be who I was designed to be unless I know who he is. And so that's so part of the process as far as seeking him. Oftentimes, as we're going on this journey, we try to compartmentalize our life. You know, Sunday is, you know, Sunday go to meeting, you know, we serving God, we're in our praise and our worship, but then Monday through Saturday, we live in the, what they call the YOLO life. You only live once, and yet not even putting within the framework of, I am a child of God regardless to the day of the week. And for interesting that this pandemic, um, there is no Sunday go to meeting. So, you know, we have to be with ourselves and be who we are without covering it up with the mask because sometimes we use church and we use worship service as a mask and so that when we come out from out, out of that mask then we're not fulfilling the things that God has assigned us to do so here during this time take the time as you're seeking God to seek who it is that he wants us to be fully fully in who he is and not necessarily what our mindset um, is 
So we always have to look at um, our life and our lifestyle. Now, mind you, I'm not, I'm not saying that it has to do with works because we all know that salvation is accepting Christ as our personal Savior, and that's what's going to allow us into God's kingdom as far as the heaven. But just because we're going to heaven doesn't mean we can do any and everything we want to do on earth. We still have to abide by his word. We still have to live according to his will because here on earth we have to be an example we have to be an example and our reason for being here is to actually bring others so that they will be able to come into the fold so how am i going to be authentic how am i going to be authentically me um hi i I tell people just be you and in being you that means just being yielded yielded to the things of god um, yielded to what it is that he has called us to be and just because we, because we yield ourselves to the things of God doesn't mean that we don't we can't be creative it doesn't mean that we can't have a design for our life we just have to make sure that that design is within the framework and the boundaries that he has set for us because the word talks about that um, we should seek him daily. So in order to be yielded, um, in order to be yielded, we have to seek God and we have to seek him. Um, And seeking him is getting in our words, seeking him is praying, seeking him is fasting. Oftentimes there's this misnomer that when we fast, you know, we're moving God's hand. No, when we fast, God is moving on our heart so that we can hear him clearly because God knows what his assignment is for us. We just can't hear it. And so when we fast, fast and when we seek him it clears out all of the junk that's in our way and all the things that you know keeps us from trying to hear his voice closely so I encourage you as you're going through your seven days or our seven days of seeking God continue um, to be yielded to God and even in finding out what he wants for our life we have to be remembered that being you or being authentic is not just about seeking God we also have to have an outward focus and having an outward focus means that he did not create us to just think about ourselves we have to think about others that is the responsibility and if we're doing this self-inspection or the self-check we may find out find out that one of our challenges um, on being authentic or just being you may be because we haven't fulfilled the responsibility that he has given us as far as to um, look out for others and also to help others. There's a scripture um, that talks about in Job. If you look at Job, everything that he went through in his life, all the challenges and the struggle, the the loss of his property, the loss of his family. Job has a lot of chapters in it. But when you get somewhere around that, I think it's 42nd chapter in the 10th verse, after everything that Job went through, when he had an outward focus and he stopped, and he prayed for his friends. When you read that 42nd chapter in the 10th verse, it says God delivered him and restored all of the things to him after he prayed for his friends. So being authentic and being you has not doesn't only have to do with just you. It also has to do with that outward focus on what is it that we're doing for others. We can't be a secret success. Your success or my success based on the kingdom, it really is depicted based on not only what we do for ourselves, but what are we doing for others. Um, the scripture in the gospel talks about if we're faithful in another, God will trust us with our own. And that's found in Luke, the 16th chapter. So there really in God, there is no individualism. Even when he saved us, he didn't save us to ourselves. He saved us as the body of Christ. So we all have different responsibilities. We're all different members. And so in order to be successful, in order to be you, in order to be authentic, we have to have an outward focus and not just look for Um, just taking care of our own stuff. Just remember that when you help somebody else, 
take care of their vision, God will bless you with yours. And that doesn't mean that you would um, neglect your vision or it doesn't mean that you won't be able to fulfill what it is he's called you to do. It just means in addition to. It doesn't have to be an or. I'm either going to take care of my business or I'm going to help somebody else. No, God has given us a capacity to where we can help someone fulfill their vision and take care of the assignment that he has for us. God not only wants us to be yielded to him, he not only wants us to have an outward focus, but he wants us to be unique, to be unique. He's not looking for any carbon copies. When he made us, he said that we were fearfully and wonderfully made, which means there's a wonder. When he made um, human and he formed us, he did that based on what the assignment that he has. My gift is separate from your gift. We can have the same exposure. We can have the same education. We can have um, the same teachings. We can say have even the same experiences. I'm still going to be different from you. No two people are alike. We're still going to have a uniqueness. Even identical twins. They still, even though they came from that same cell, they, the same egg, they still have different fingerprints. The identical twins don't even have the same fingerprints. God is so vast in his wonder and how he created us uniquely. He wants us to be unique. He wants us to find out who we are in him. Even with the weather, I looked, um, I was doing some reading and I noticed that snowflakes, there are at one time, I think it said seven, one septillion, one septillion, which is like a trillion of a trillion. Snowflakes can fall, but none of them are identical. They may have the same makeup, they may have the same molecule, but it's something about that structure that each of those ice crystals in that snowflake is a little different than the next one. And that's how we are. There's only 7 billion, around 7 billion people, you know, in the world. But each of us have a unique assignment. And we have to discover and we have to find that assignment, find what it is that God has called us to do. And sometimes we may get a little beside ourselves and say, well, I'm finding my assignment. I'm going to be um, free to be me or free to do what it is that I want to do. But I implore us that we should be careful. We should be careful even even when we're finding our assignment and being uniquely us, that we keep it within the framework of God's character and also the framework of God's word. We can't let our freedoms become a collective bondage for someone else. So we have to be careful that as we are exercising our freedoms, as we're exercising our choices, that we keep it within um, God's framework. And I know that as far, especially we really here in the Western world, that we um, sometimes don't take on the responsibility of, I am my brother's keeper. Um, we can't live a life to be unique and to live a life to just be authentic if we're not thinking about our brother because that's not how God intended us to be. He wanted He wanted us to have our individual freedoms, our individual choices, but it's not at the demise or the sacrifice of someone else. We have to be our brother's keeper because the world is waiting on us. The world is waiting on me to manifest what it is that God has called me to be. He's waiting on you to manifest the gifts and talents that he has called you to. Romans, the eighth chapter, the 19th verse says that that for creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. The world is waiting on me. The world is waiting on you to be what it is that God has called us to be because there is a problem. There is a person. There is something out there in that world that nobody can take care of it but me based on the assignment and the gifts that God has given me. There's things out there. There are problems. There are solutions, things that are waiting Waiting to be discovered that no one but you can take care of that but we have to be on the discovery to find out what it is so that we will know that and it's going to take time you know it's a process it's not a something that's just going to happen overnight as I grow and as I mature 
um, I'm going to have to make sure that I see God. And there are going to be some failures. There are going to be some mistakes. But that still doesn't stop me from pressing forward. We have to move forward. But I want to encourage you that in moving forward, and so there may be some errors. There may be some missteps. There may be some mishaps. Don't forget to stop and repent to our Savior. Repent to God. And repent just means to be sorry for what you did, but then turn from it and not to do it again. Oftentimes we miss that step. Sometimes we mess up. Sometimes things go wrong. And then we say, oh, well, we just move on. Don't move on. Stop. Repent. Seek God's forgiveness. And then, and then um, we move on. You know, so we have to be careful about that. I hear a lot, um, oftentimes I hear the saying, um, nobody's perfect, nobody's perfect. Um, but really when you look at the scripture I don't find that particular phrase nobody's perfect I don't find that supported by scripture the scripture said there is none good and there is none righteous but um, but God but the thing about it is perfect when you look at it in the context of the scripture it's just talking about maturity it's not talking about perfection as in you never make a mistake you never fall um, you get everything right a hundred percent all the time that's not the perfect so I think sometimes um, there's a um, we mistakenly uh, interpret that word differently but God wants us to be perfect he says be ye perfect for I am perfect but I want you to dig a little deeper in your word what does that word perfect mean it talks about maturity it talks about completion so he wants us to be complete in him and in being that that's us being authentic that's us being who we are. That's us being yielded. That's us having an outward focus on others. That's us being unique as far as what he has called us to be. Because yes, so don't mix up perfect with good. Because the Bible said there is none good. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short. Um, of the glory of God. And he also um, says that there is none righteous, but as far as perfect, he wants us to be mature. So as I'm seeking God, as I'm learning to be authentically me, as I'm learning to grow, I'm going to seek to have that maturity, to have that authenticity, to be everything that he has called me to be. And so I encourage you doing the seeking of him that you also be authentic be you, be yielded, be outwardly focused, but be unique. The world is waiting on us. God bless you.